charging truck battery. Anyways, here are a few UPS units I've got laying around that I might be trying to sell soon if I ever get around to it. And uh, I want you to just look at the size of these things and know that this is a 1.4 kVA unit, this is a 1.5. This is a 1 kVA switch mode unit, which doesn't have a big transformer. I think this is a 1.5 kVA of the same version. And just a few more. There's a 500 VA unit and 800, 650, two 1.5 kVAs. And there's a huge 1 kVA. But, then we have this thing which they say is a 2000 VA or 2 kVA unit that's roughly the size of a normal about 600 VA unit the brand is Mustech or Musetech however you want to see it and you can see there how it says 2000 VA or 1080 watts which is a very bad specification since it means it can't handle any kind of poor power factor units properly and uh, it's got a 15 amp fuse but a 10 amp uh, input jack so yeah this thing is not <laughs> just horrible and I thought we'd just uh, uh, take it apart and have a look inside because I'm going to trip this unit there's no way I'm going to try and use it for myself and there's even less of a way I'm going to try and sell it so I'm just gonna strip the transformer out of it and build a big ass battery charger to use with my Variac for instance for charging truck batteries because this whole jig is kind of well cumbersome so what do we have? First, battery compartment. This thing came with two 7 amp hour batteries factory installed, which, <laughs> well, you just don't run a 2 kVA UPS on two 7 amp hour batteries. You, you, you aren't, and with <laughs> trying to draw that much current through these thin little wires is just a suicide mission. Uh, for example, a an APC 2.2 kVA unit runs on four 17 amp hour batteries in series for a 48 volt system, and that's a single 17 amp hour battery. You couldn't even fit it inside this unit. And what else? We've got single layer PCB. Screwed on heat sinks at least. Big ass transformer, which is well, it isn't adequately sized, but it's fairly big. So that's why I'm going to be parting this unit out. And various SMT stuff mounted on there, mostly through hole it seems. Very poor solder joint quality in general. You can see how they've manually touched up a few solder joints while not touching up others, so... Oh. Don't need that anymore. <laughs> so yeah, the wave soldering quality on this thing has not been great. Oh, look at that. A pedal has fallen off. I haven't been inside of this unit, I haven't uh, been resoldering or doing anything with it, I just brought it home because it was free to uh, essentially saw what the hell it was and just put it away on a shelf hoping to forget about it. Anyway, I thought we'd try and power this thing up and maybe have a look at the output waveform just to see if it's even a jagged uh, fake sound wave or if it's just pure square wave. Alright, so I've hooked up a 24 volt power supply and my scope to the output of this unit. I have no idea if it's actually capable of turning on without uh, 
of in grid power because I don't have a power cord connected to it. But I guess we'll see. So let's get some power into it. Well, we're getting a lot of noise on the output, that's for sure. 50 hertz hum and lots of it. Weird. Oh well, we'll see what happens. Okay. Sounds to me like we need some more capacitance. Fifteen thousand microfarads later. Let's try again. Oh, it seems we're up and running. And oh dear. <laughs> no, shut up. That does not look very nice. Not very nice at all. Oh dear. Oh no, we do have some kind of pulse mo modulation going on there. I'm kind of surprised it's not a pure square wave. <laughs> so, this wave should change a bit when you actually put some load on it, but with just a free amp power supply, I'm not going to try doing that, I think. But, hmm, yeah, on closer inspection, this actually looks quite alright. I have no idea about how good the regulation on it actually is. Alright, I checked my setup, and this actually looks surprisingly good. Oh, I read the scope wrong, so there's a 100, 200, 300. About 350 volts peak, which is okay for a fully charged battery. So, yeah, this thing could actually have some decent ish regulation. I was uh, very surprised to find that. So, this thing not entirely horrible. It even has a quality fan in there, a sun on. But, yeah, I'm not going to even try loading this thing down, and especially not with 2 kVA. So let's just kill this thing and take it apart to see what's it made, what it's made out of. I'm going to turn off the power supply so you can see how it does when you turn it off. You can see how when the battery voltage decreases, it actually raises the duty cycle in order to keep the RMS voltage at a constant 230 volts. So, yeah. It's got regulation. It works. I'm surprised. Alright, there's the inside. Quite spartan as you'd expect. Especially when it comes to stuff like uh, filtering and uh, component mounting. All these capacitors and chokes and everything are just mounted loosely like that. Which pretty much means the solder joints overboard is going to fail from nothing. So this is a very <laughs> unreliable construction. But they've used reasonable quality parts. We've got Gemicon capacitors for the most part and a big what's that? Chemicon over there. These switching devices, I check the data sheet, they actually should be able to survive a full load of this thing, which surprised me. And uh, it's got a little microcontroller to keep everything in check. And judging from the amount of relays in it, it's probably a line interactive model with the autoformer connection going on there. Although I wouldn't trust the regulation on it to be very spectacular, nor the line detection. But, <laughs> yeah, there's really not a whole lot to say about this thing. I'm probably going to save this PCB because it's got a few relays on it. Good for spare parts. Nice big switching units. They're actually name brand parts. International Rectifier. And over here we can see how they've used the same PCB for 1 kilo kVA up to 2 kVA. 
and they've sold it in with fuses. Naughty. Uh, yeah. Silver in quality, as we saw before, very poor. The thing is practically falling apart right out of the factory. Yeah, that's that. Into the spare part spin it goes. But the real treasure is this thing, which should be able to deliver quite a few amps into my truck battery when I combine it with a few big ass diodes and my variac. Hmm. <laughs> but that's probably the stuff for another video. So cheerio. Alright, let's try this thing out. Works is treat. Burning a hole in my bench. Maybe not quite photonic induction power, but that'll do. Let's try this once more, but this time with the Variac. I have no idea if my 10 amp fuses are going to handle this, but we'll see. And please, whatever you do, don't try this at home. I know that I look like I'm about 15 years old, but I do have a small beard and I'm a lot older than I look. And I have an education in this kind of business, and I have a fair idea about how to do this safely. If you've never done anything like this before, you don't have an education, you... Just find an old UPS, don't take the transformer up and explode copper wire with it. You're going to burn your house down. And just because it arrived in the mail a couple of minutes ago, here's a random electrical safety tip for all you eBay buyers out there. When you order something from eBay that's grid powered like this cheap replacement camera charger, never ever use the supplied mains cables. These things usually say something nice like this one, 0.75 millimeters times two, but that is never ever the case. This is perhaps 0.2 millimeters at the most. It's probably not copper. They tend to have copper colored wiring that's not copper. Sometimes it's even magnetic, so it could be iron or something. And uh, these are just a health hazard. They are absolutely lethal. You can't trust them for one second. You can just tear them in two like that. So please, just throw these away right away. Don't even use them for scrap. Thank you.